this video we're going to take a look at the process of energy flow within ecosystems. And this is for IB section 4.2. And as we've been talking about in this ecology units, uh, ecology is really the interactions between different organisms. And the movement of energy through different levels of the ecosystem and through different organisms is really a prime example of how they interact with one another. And so to begin, we need to discuss where is that energy coming from. And really where this is all starting is from the sun. Sunlight provides the energy and supplies the energy for ecosystems um, for, most, uh, for most ecosystems. And this can obviously depend and differ a little bit depending on the environment. For example, a desert versus a rainforest is going to have very different amounts of sunlight that they receive, but that sunlight is providing the energy for the organisms that live there. And as we previously talked about, photosynthesis would be the process of how that light energy gets converted into chemical energy in the form of carbon compounds, sugar being made as a, as a product. And so then that, within those producer organisms, here's some examples of producers, various plants and bacteria species, those producers are able to make carbohydrates, lipids, and other car carbon compounds, and they use the energy, the sugars, for example, that they make through photosynthesis um, to make ATP through respiration. And that's what consumers do as well. We acquire energy not by making it ourselves, but by getting it from somewhere else. And then we use that, that ATP energy made by respiration, aerobic respiration, um, to be able to do different tasks and to allow ourselves to be able to function. And ATP is needed for activities like uh, to make DNA and RNA, uh, for proteins to be able to function, for pumping molecules across membranes, moving a variety of different things. ATP is what drives the workforce in in cells. And so producers that are using this sunlight energy would be referred to as autotrophs as we've briefly talked about and they use photosynthesis in order to be able to uh, have that energy be created. The process of aerobic respiration results in the production of energy in the form of ATP uh, but it also is not completely efficient. We'll look at this a little bit more later but some energy is lost during that process and actually it's quite a bit of that energy and it's generally lost in the form of of waste. Uh, lost as heat uh, would, would be the form of waste. And we'll take a little bit closer look at that here in a second. And so if we take a closer look at the movement of energy through ecosystems, really what we're doing is looking at feeding relationships. And this is dependent on what eats what. Um, a food chain is a way to demonstrate or to show this. And it describes the transfer of energy from one organism to another. And so this is showing the movement of, of energy uh, from one organism to another and in this diagram we can see the arrow is pointing to the direction of the organism that is getting the energy. And so here we have our producers, we have primary consumers, secondary consumers, tertiary and quaternary consumers. And as we'll see we, we generally discover and see very few quaternary and even tertiary consumers within the environment. The trophic level is slightly different than the consumer level. A trophic level is the level at which uh, an organism is present uh, or sometimes feeds at in a food chain or a food web. And so that how it differs from a consumer level is the plants and the phytoplankton in this in image would represent trophic level one. It's the first level within our food chain. The second level for the herbivore and the zooplankton would be trophic level two, three, four, and five, and so on. And so the trophic level is slightly different than the consumer level. Producers are not considered a consumer, obviously, whereas they are counted for in the trophic level. So chemical energy can move through ecosystems, through feeding relationships. And how we, ha how we can better represent this is through something called a food web. And this is essentially multiple food chains put together that show all of the feeding relationship interactions between different organisms within an ecosystem. Oftentimes, prey have more than one predator. Um, and so it's not just a linear transfer of energy. There's lots of different interactions. And this is one of the things that really exemplifies ecology is showing how all these different organisms are, are connected with one another and interact with one another. Um, and so predators are going to take advantage of the easiest prey that they can find, the most abundant food sources, and a food web helps to show this. And this is showing how chemical energy can be transferred through, uh, through different parts of the ecosystem through food webs or food chains. So here's a really nice image that represents a food web. You can see that there are arrows going in a wide variety of different directions, um, in which case the Arctic hare, in this case, is providing a food source for a variety of different organisms um, because, uh, because a lot of different organisms depend on it in order to be able to uh, survive. 
something that you could do in this image is go through and identify what organisms have what consumer and trophic levels and something that's important to keep in mind is sometimes depending on what an organism is eating their consumer and trophic levels can change um, and so that's that's something that that's important to keep in mind uh, take a second to pause the video and go through and see if you can identify consumer and trophic levels. So getting back to our feeding relationships, as we said earlier, sunlight is the initial energy source for pretty much all communities. Um, energy transformation is never 100% efficient, and we'll get into this even a little bit more, but essentially energy in the transfer from one trophic level to the next is not going to be 100% efficient. And it's actually very inefficient. Only 10% of that energy actually gets transferred. So during the process of respiration uh, and converting the uh, sugars into ATP, some energy is going to be lost. And usually how that energy is lost is in the form of heat. So as I mentioned earlier, in the process of making DNA and RNA or proteins functioning, uh, when that energy is used, so some of it is lost in the form of heat. Um, and cells can't take that heat energy, they have to have sugar in order to be able to do work. That, so that heat is just lost to the environment. And that is one of the reasons why the transformation of energy is not 100% efficient, is because some of it is lost as, as heat energy. Other ways that energy is lost from, um, from organisms is oftentimes when a living organism is killed and consumed by something else, not all of the material is actually consumed. If you think about bones, for example, most oftentimes another organism is not going to eat the bones or maybe the hair of that organism. And so then that just eventually will break down and degrade into the soil, but that, that energy is not, an, is not consumed by another living organism um, initially. So, so that would be also considered lost. Um, so heat, waste, and respiration are, are primary, the primary ways that that energy is lost. A very important part to a feeding relationship is saprotrophic bacteria and fungi, um, detrivores as well that help to recycle nutrients that are in uh, potentially in the soil uh, or within the ecosystem. Phosph uh, phosphate, nitrogen, uh, those would be two good examples. So energy moves through the ecosystem. Autotrophs transfer light energy to chemical energy. Energy is lost by heat, respiration, metabolism, waste, as we talked about. Uh, consumers obtain energy by eating other consumers, and the death of an organism passes energy to detrivores and saprotrophs when the dead matter decays. And so it's this whole connected cycle, um, and, and all of that results in energy being moved through the ecosystem. Um, so when we look at this topic of energy loss, we have sun to producers, uh, to consumers, to decomposers, and through each one of those steps, some of that energy is lost. Um, that that light energy is, is uh, used to make chemical energy uh, through photosynthesis, and then that chemical energy can be used, sugar can be used to power a variety of different functions within the cell. Um, organisms can't use that heat energy uh, in order to be able to do work. It's just lost to the abiotic environments. Um, and so what we en end up with is about 10% of energy actually is getting transferred. And that energy, that, that heat that is lost, um, can make organisms warmer um, uh, but it eventually is going to be lost to the abiotic uh, environment, and this is supported by laws of, of thermodynamics. Um, and unfortunately, it, as I said, it can't be converted uh, back into a usable form of energy. Um, most of that energy is being lost uh, th uh, in respiration for cell activities. As, as I mentioned previously, not all food can be eat, uh, consumed, hair, bones, etc., um, and not all organisms at each trophic level are eaten. Uh, locusts consume all the plants, but only parts of the plants. And so then obviously that plant is dead. It's not really able to continue growing, generally for the most part, but it still has energy um, that, that is still present. So as a result of this, uh, as energy is lost each level, less and less energy is available at the next energy level or the next trophic level. Um, energy loss is the reason why food chains are generally short. Uh, there, and, and there can be few transfers of energy can be sustained because more and more energy is lost and so it takes a greater and greater number of the first level producers or first level consumers to be able to support second, third, and fourth level consumers. And so what this results in is the structuring of feeding relationships, if you just show it in a 3D model, in the shape of a pyramid where there's a large amount on the bottom and fewer and fewer 
uh, as you move up that pyramid. So this is kind of what it looks like. There's a couple different types of pyramids. Pyramids of numbers, pyramids of biomass, um, but the pyramids represent the flow of energy within that ecosystem. And a pyramid of numbers is uh, a creation of a pyramid based on the number of organisms. Um, no allowance is made for the differences in sizes. A pyramid of biomass is estimating the number of organisms and then, find, uh, then finding the biomass of the sample. Um, represents matter in different organisms but doesn't compensate for speed or ma uh, of matter consumed. And lastly, the one that we're really looking at is in an energy pyramid where you can see that there is far more in the lower level. Um, the first level, this would be like producers, uh, first level consumers, second level, and third level. And so as we move up that energy pyramid, there's less and less of those organisms present because so much of that energy at each one of these steps, 90% is being lost. That wraps up our discussion of energy flow. We'll continue to take a look at more interconnections and relationships between different organisms in our ecology unit.